Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and Apple released watchOS 11 to the public. watchOS 11 is available around the world at the same time for everyone as long as you have a supported device. That means on Apple Watch SE second generation, Apple Watch 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, or Apple Watch Ultra 1 or 2. If you have any of those devices, you'll be able to get some of these features, not necessarily all of them. Now the first features have to do with watch faces. So let me go ahead and unlock this and slide over here. And I have a new photos watch face. Now this is a little bit different this time around where it uses machine learning to sort of help you find the perfect picture for your watch face. You can actually filter favorites and more. So tap on it. It will switch, change it around to however you'd like, edit it, maybe change the time point and much more. So it's very familiar with what we've had already, but one of my favorite watch faces that they've just added is called flux. This actually shows the time as it's scrolling up. It's second by second meter. And if we press and hold, we'll go to edit. You'll see, we can change the overall color to whatever we'd like. So we can customize this. Maybe we want it darker and we can even tap to add more colors based on whatever we'd like, maybe different cases Apple has had available and other colors as well. So if we want different ones, we can select or unselect them. Another watch face they've added. I really like as well. If we scroll over here, there we go. This is a new one where it uses motion. You can see the background move as I move my watch around. And if we press and hold, it's called reflections. Now we have a couple different options for this one. If we go in and edit, we can actually change complications or we can change the color or we can change the dial so that it's actually showing complications or not showing them at all. So I really like this overall dial quite a bit. You can change it again to whatever you like. There's a bunch of different color options that work for you. So just select whatever you'd like, add more if you'd like. And this is one I've been using for a few days now. Now, smart stacks have been updated as well. If we scroll into smart stacks, if you're actually playing music, it will show the most relevant thing right away. So I was playing a song. It pops up here at the top. If I have a weather alert, that's something new where we have a weather alert that will show up right at the top. Let us know the most relevant information. We also have things such as live activities for sports scores or Uber, and we have new widgets here as well, such as not only weather, but also photos, training load, distance, and Shazam, so we can listen to music or identify music. Apple has added some apps as well. The new Tides app actually shows tides around the world. It starts with Mavericks Beach, Waikiki Beach, or Bondi Beach, but you can add whatever you'd like. If we go into Waikiki and spin the digital crown, you can actually see the rise and fall of the tide itself. Then we can get more information, tap the little eye, and see different information such as swell, weather, wind, sunrise, sunset, and then we can open it within maps. Within maps, it will show the beach and give more information about it. So we can go to the little information in the upper right, see how far away it is. But also we have that information about the beach with the different tides. And this carries across to maps itself. If we go into maps on the iPhone and go to a national park, all of the national parks now in the United States and some in Japan actually have the option for hikes. We can select a hike that maybe we want to go on. It gives information about it and then carries across to the Apple watch. So if I set directions to here, I'll change the location. Then you'll see the amount of steps here. I'll go ahead and hit continue. You can even set your own custom route. If we go back to the watch within the maps app, if we go into this, you can see the current route that we're on and we can scroll back and forth between the route that we're on and the location. So we get turn by turn directions and we can even save these routes offline. So if we don't have a connection, we can still see them on the watch using GPS information as far as the location goes. We also have a new app called Vitals. Within Vitals, it tracks sleep sessions and gives you more information about it. Here's some information from my friend Brom that actually sent me his as he uses this while he sleeps to get that information. So it gives you an idea of what it looks like. You'll see it says it needs more data for me, but that gives you an idea of what it looks like overall. And it seems to work pretty well and give relevant information. We also have a new translate app, just like we have on the iPhone. We can translate to different languages, select our language to and from, and we have some options in the upper right. We have pronunciation speed, autoplay translations, preferred input, download languages, and on device mode, and then our about translations and privacy. If we go back out, we can then translate. So we'll press the button. Hi, how are you today? It recognizes that I've finished, and then we can play back what I've said or the translation in Spanish. Hola, ¿qué tal estás hoy? 
Not only can we play that back here, but if you have an Apple watch ultra two or a series 10 Apple watch, we can now play music and podcasts directly on here using the speaker built in. So if we go into podcasts here, and then if we go into the nine to five Mac happy hour podcast, press play, we can turn the volume up and down, but you can hear it. And then you can pause it, of course, and you can even see it in your main screen here with a live activity that shows up if you want to use that in your smart stack. That also works with music as well, but again, only on a Series 10 or Apple Watch Ultra 2. Within activity, we have some updates. So if you're measuring your activity rings, press the button in the upper left, you've got your move goals, of course. And if we scroll all the way to the bottom, we can actually pause our rings. We can change it for the day or until Monday, until October, or you can customize this as well. So if you want to pause this for whatever reason, you can do that. You can also adjust your goals directly from the watch itself from change goals. So if you want to change your goals for move goals, you can do that on the watch instead of having to use the iPhone for that. So it makes things a little easier there. In the fitness app, you can actually rearrange and customize the summary as well. So we have the summary here, and if we scroll to the bottom, we can edit the summary and see it a little bit differently. So if we want to add something, we can, we can move this around, delete it if we want and fully customize it as we see fit. So whatever we want to see, we can show at the top and see different information. We also have something new called training load. Training load allows us to get insights that help you decide when to push and when to recover. If you're using this to work out a lot, you'll see more information here. And again, thanks to my friend Brom for showing us some of the different training load as he's been working out with it. It shows in the health app as well. So this gives you an idea of what it actually looks like. It allows you to track your effort. And again, you can see that in the health app to get an idea of how hard you should push while you're working out. Now, if you're actually working out, or maybe you just go to take a walk, we'll start a workout. And if we scroll over to the side here and scroll down, we can now check in to notify someone when we're out for a walk and when we'll be home. So you'll see, it says when workout ends, we can actually send an alert that it's over, send it to my daughter, scroll up, tap send. We can edit who it's being sent to. We can check in or check out. It's up to us. And you'll see it says when are notifications sent. So just like we have on iPhone, it works now when you're working out. Last year, Apple added the ability for custom workouts. They've now added an additional workout. So if we scroll way down here to S, we're under swimming. And if we go to the bottom, you'll see we now have the option for pool swim. So we can now add that as a custom workout if we want to create that ourselves. Also, when you're using a custom workout, you can now see what's up next while you're working out. So if you're using this and maybe you have something set for a triathlon or you want to switch to running, you can actually see what activity is up next. Cycle tracking gets an update for new pregnancy focus. It allows you to display gestational age and tracks your health data across all of your charts. So if you're using cycle tracking, that information will work along with your health app to help you along with your pregnancy. One of the apps that's really great, or one of the features is double tap. Double tap allows us to double tap our fingers to activate something in the watch. And double tap now works with any app. You can use it to scroll through things such as weather, and it works across the whole OS. It's also available for developers to implement as well. You now have the option with the home app to use it with a lock. So you can use it to maybe just walk up, activate the lock and it will open. So that's something that's new and wallet gets a new feature. So if we go into wallet, if you're in your Apple card, you can go down to the bottom and you'll have the option for tap to cash. Use your Apple watch to send a balance to someone, bring it up to someone else's watch or iPhone, and then you can send them cash anonymously without transferring any of, any of your personal data. This is something that we have on the iPhone with iOS 18 as well. Something else Apple announced is sleep apnea detection. That's coming later, but should work on some of the older watches as well. That's something coming probably with WatchOS 11.1 or a later update. Apple intelligence isn't really part of Apple watch or WatchOS 11. We do have Siri and maybe we'll get some of those features, but it's not really built in and Apple hasn't pushed it at all with Apple watch. They have the new faces. Of course, I actually really like this one, but I miss the complications when using it. And of course we have those few different faces this time around. As far as battery life, well, it seems to be pretty decent early on in some of the betas. It was problematic, but now it seems to be pretty good. I've been off the charger since about 2 PM and you'll see the time now is 643. 3 p.m. So I do have optimized charging. And if we go into settings, you'll see last charge to 100%. And this is a one year old Apple watch ultra two. I'm at 100% capacity. 
So it's doing pretty well overall. Again, under battery health, we have optimized battery charging. It's not on all of them, but it seemed to help out pretty much on this device. Speed and everything else seems to be pretty good. There are some bugs here and there with the first revision. In fact, when I was trying to show you some of the options when you're playing a podcast, it was very buggy trying to load some of that data or when you're just using music and pressing play or pause. So sometimes it can be a little problematic, but in general, it seems to be fairly stable. If you're wondering if you should upgrade to watchOS 11, well, I don't think it will be any slower. In general, you'll gain a few features. Of course, it will work as expected. Now, you may not get all of the watch faces as well, depending on which watch you have. But in general, I think it's a good update, more of a refinement update that adds features that people have been asking for. I'd love to hear from you if you're using watchOS 11 and what you think of it in the comments below. I'll link this wallpaper in the description as well if you'd like to get your hands on it. And of course, if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.